Hey, it's Chef with YourLearningCareer.com. If you are responsible for delivering or designing training for your, your organization, you're probably always looking for activity ideas to include in your training sessions. And so one of the things I like to do here on the channel is to share different activities that you can use in your classes. So one I've uh, chosen to show you for this video is called Poets, Don't We Know It? It comes from one of my favorite books, the big book of humorous training games. I will link to this in the description. So let's go take a look. All right, so like I said, this is called Poets, Don't We Know It? And the premise of this is that we're going to have our participants create a poem on the spot together. They're going to basically take turns uh, saying a line to create a poem. It's totally improvised, totally spontaneous. You start with a person, they say a line, the next person has to go, they try to rhyme with that line, then a third person goes, you continue, you know, and continue on and on until you want to stop the poem. So that's the basic premise. Now there is a little setup that I would do beforehand and that's what this slide is. So I, I might have a slide like this where I'm going to introduce to the class the different types of rhymes. So the first type of rhyme I would tell them about is the perfect rhyme. So that might be something like, I am having a really good time. I am now going to go eat a lime. So time and lime, they rhyme, they're perfect. That's the perfect rhyme, it's so good. Then you have the good enough rhyme. So then that might sound like, I am having a really good time. I hope I don't have to wait in line. So time and line, it's like, well, that kind of rhymes. That's, uh, yeah, that's good enough. Then we have the coasting rhyme. So that might be something like, I am having a really good time. Can somebody please tell me the time? So time and time rhyme with each other, or it rhymes, time rhymes with itself. Um, so that's kind of coasting it. And then finally, we have the so sue me rhyme. I am having a really good time. I can't wait to go to Dallas. Huh? That is basically where they did not even it attempt to rhyme it. Now, the reason we tell them about these types of rhymes is because you don't want them to stress out about always coming up with the perfect rhyme. We want them to know it's okay to do a so sue me rhyme. It's okay to be good enough or coasting. Any of this is fine. And in fact, I would encourage them if you have a so sue me rhyme, own it, belt it out, be confident, be loud, be proud. Do not worry about being embarrassed or not having the perfect rhyme. We want this to be very fun uh, and non-threatening. And in fact, it will be like when the people, when people have that so sue me rhyme, that, that actually will be the most fun when that happens. Now you can do this, um, however you want to run it as far as you can do person a starts next person rhymes third person starts a new line next person rhymes you can do the typical back and forth rhyming or you could set tell them hey every line try to rhyme you know whatever however you whatever kind of structure you want to set up is fine and then however long you want it to go everybody may go once you may go a couple of times but that's going to be up to you as the um, as the facilitator so let's talk about what kind of preparation you'll need for this well actually you don't really need a whole lot of preparation other than figuring out what you're going to say how you're going to introduce it you really don't have to have anything as part of your preparation but i would maybe have a slide like you just saw maybe something to set it up and it doesn't even have to be a PowerPoint slide. Um, you could, if you're doing this in a classroom, you can do it on a flip chart or on a whiteboard, whatever you want to do. But you certainly could have a slide as well. And, in, and then you may um, want to have something to keep time. So if you type in online metronome in Google, it'll, it'll actually pop right up with a metronome. And you can use that to keep time. And that, that could be particularly helpful if you're doing this virtually. But these are both, th these are optional. 
So you don't have to have that. It just could be something kind of fun to use for the activity. Now, as far as the type of classes that you could use this activity for, you could pretty much use it for anything. Now, obviously, you can use it as just a, an easy icebreaker for class or event or whatever, a session, but it also lends itself to a lot of different kinds of classes. So you can see here, I, I would use this for any one of these, communication, customer service, sales, presentation skills, team building, train the trainer. Because this activity is very focused on listening to each other, that's where you could really weave it into any one of these. You know, for example, if I'm talking to a sales group, I might emphasize the fact that, hey, you know, sometimes we as salespeople, we want to do a lot of the talking, but you know, you really, it's really important to listen, that kind of thing. So you, you can weave this into a lot of different types of classes, which is one of the reasons I really like it. All right, just a couple of tips. Like I said, this is something you could do either in person or online. If you are doing it as part of an online class, um, I might suggest having the cameras on if you can. I know that's not always possible, and, and especially if you've got a lot of people that can mess up the bandwidth, but I do think these this type of game is a lot of fun when you can see each other and you can kind of see each other struggling and you know really root for each other um, for the rhymes so that might be one thing I'd do and then the other thing if I'm doing this online I would I would want to have some way to determine the order so in person if I'm in person live with this I would just have them stand in a circle I just say, okay, everybody, we're going to get in a circle. And I don't care about the order. But you can't really, you can't go stand in a circle in a virtual classroom. So that's why I say determine the order. And that could be maybe you have them go alphabetically by first name. And that doesn't mean that Andrew has to go first. You could still start with Carol or whoever you want to start with and just continue down the list and maybe I'd have a list already of my participants so as the facilitator I could keep track of the order and maybe shout out the names but I'd I'd have some way to determine the order so people know when it's their turn if I'm online but like I said in person I would just have them stand in a circle and then the other thing I might do in person is instead of maybe I could have a metronome of course but I think probably even more fun would, ju would, would be to start a beat with a clap and have them clapping um, in time for that. So there's just a couple things. All right, and finally, um, here are just some ideas for debrief questions. Now, you don't have to have debrief questions. Again, if you're using this just purely as an icebreaker, that is absolutely okay, and you don't have to have any debrief questions. But if you are using this as part of a, like I, like I mentioned, um, you know, presentation skills, communication class, whatever, you may want to have some questions that connect to the material. So things like this and these are just some suggestions you know these I would you could you could come up with your own but you might talk about okay how did it feel when it was your turn and then you could talk about how oh I was really nervous I was I didn't know what I was gonna say I didn't know what the other person was gonna say and you could say yeah just like when you are doing a presentation or you know whatever you're relating it to you could ask him what did it feel like when you gave a so sue me line and and you can talk about how oh you know, I, I was worried, but then it ended up being really funny. I got a good laugh. You know, this is a great one because listening is such a big part of a lot of different types of classes. So this one talks about how the game forces you to listen and how often do we actually wait to hear what someone is saying before we start talking and what is the impact. So that can really get into a great discussion. Similar one, how is this like a real life situation where you had to present? So if you're doing a presentation skills class or, a, or sales or a train the trainer, because this game is very improvisational, you have to think on your feet. And that's similar like if you're, if you're training a class or teaching, facilitating, presenting, you have to think on your feet just like you do in this game and then again you you could come up with your own so whatever whatever else you think of you could um, put in as a debrief question so those are just a few ideas to get you going 
It's a really fun activity with a lot of different applications. Okay, so that was Poets Don't We Know It, a very fun activity, as you can see, and it, again, it's very versatile. You can use it online, you can use it in person. It comes from this awesome book, The Big Book of Humorous Training Games. I'll link to it in the description. Um, if you have a favorite activity that you'd like to see demoed here, or uh, you know, something I can, we can adapt to, to online, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Um, it's always good to get new ideas from, from everybody. And if you want to keep seeing these kinds of videos with, with activities that you can use, make sure to subscribe. All right, we'll see you next time.